Hey guys, it's Emily and Synth Riders. I'm Poison Cupcake. And I just wanted to do a video and kind of go over settings that can help you improve your score and show you what's worked for me. Okay, the first setting that I wanna talk about is colors because I think this is the most important setting that you can work with to help you achieve better scores. Uh, specifically the feedback on perfect hits. Um, the default colors that come with the game, I wanna say that the, the perfect is gold. Um, I find that most people when they're newer, it makes more sense to us to change the perfect hits to green, the good hits to yellow, and the poor hits to red. And I'm gonna show you mine. Mine are actually a little bit different, and this is under score. After I got more comfortable with that, I ended up, I changed mine. I'm gonna explain why I have mine the way they are. My perfect hits are black because I do slow play quite a bit for 100% for the gold lightning bolts, and I don't want to see any feedback for my perfect hits. I only want to be alerted if I don't get a perfect hit. So that's why I have it set to black because I can barely see anything then. It doesn't distract me. Um, my good is white. That's something that pops out to me. It says, do a little better. <laughs> And red is poor. Okay, let's talk about obstacles. Um, I don't have a lot of trouble uh, failing out on walls, so I keep my walls dark. Like, I can barely see them. I can see them enough to get around them, and I keep my opacity down so that way I can see any notes behind the walls. Um, if you are somebody that's hitting a lot of walls, you know, bump your opacity up, make them brighter. Uh, so that you can really see them so that you're not failing on them. Because if you have no fail on, you're not going to fail, but it will cut your score in half. So you don't want to uh, trigger that if you're playing for high scores, obviously. Notes. The default colors that the notes are, I think they're pretty good. The blue and the pink. But um, maybe if you're struggling to full combo to get a perfect... Maybe do something that's brighter. I really like my left orb to be white. And then the right, that's where I kind of have fun and change my colors. A good place to start, I really feel like, is white on the left and red on the right. Because it's such a contrast, it's really easy for the eye to see. Um, try that one, but as you can see right now, I'm white and pink because it matches my decal. Um, the specials, I never change these. Plenty of people do, but I prefer just to uh, keep them the way they are. All right, now that we've talked about colors, let's talk about the rest of the visuals. Particle effects. So we just spent all that time talking about uh, you want to see your colors, right? You want to see your hits. If you have particle effects on, that's going to distract you and you're not going to be able to see them as well. So I definitely recommend, if you're playing for score, to turn those off. Miss note effects and hit obstacle effects. That's the thing uh, that lights everything up red. I have mine off. I rely only on audio for those, but if you're a visual person and that helps you, turn them on. Flash effects, I have them low. I don't like to be distracted. Contrast corridor, definitely turn that on. I never actually see it, but when you're playing, it's supposed to kind of, I guess, darken the area so that it makes the notes more visible to you. In gameplay, there's two settings I want to talk about. The haptic intensity. Play around with that. See what feels good for you. That really strong vibration, if it's at 100%, that could be throwing you off. Or maybe it helps you. For me, I like to have mine turned pretty far down. It just gives me a lighter feel, and that works for me. Moving stages. I have mine off. I mentioned that I don't really like to be distracted, and I get distracted quite easy. So if that's you, turn them off. So on to calibration. This one's super important. Um, let's talk about height. So height, when I calibrate my height, I actually stand with my feet shoulders width distance and I tip my head down like that to calibrate because I like to play low. I'm on the shorter side, so I feel that playing low kind of helps me to get um, a better advantage when it comes to the actual wingspan, not so much the height. So yeah, I play low. That's why if you see some of my videos where I'm playing for real, I am very much in a squat. You'll also find certain maps play better at different heights. I know for me, I tend to kind of memorize them after a while. I bet there's people that write it down. Um, yeah, certain maps I like to play tall and certain maps I like to play low. And you'll just learn that over time. But don't be afraid to um, change your height around in between songs and see what works for you. Controller orbs. 
This one can be a slippery slope. Uh, when I first started playing, they didn't have the controller orbs setting. Uh, so it's something I learned maybe uh, four months into the game. And I found for me, I like to have my Z axis all the way out to one. Again, I mentioned being on the shorter side and sometimes wingspan issues to have that all the way out really helps me. But of course that took some getting used to. Um, I don't change any of the other things. I believe these rotations are purely cosmetic. Um, something I want to talk about, x-axis, I don't really have any good tips. That's just kind of trial and error, but why? I have a tip for that. That's what moves the notes up and down. So stand with your arms down and don't look at your orbs. Just put your hands out in front of you and then look down. Is one of them higher than the other? Do it again. Mine are equal, so I leave mine at zero. But there has been times, I don't know if it was just, you know, the way my muscles were developing, but for a time, my left orb, I was always just naturally putting it higher. So what I did is for a while, I played with my left hand with it down like that. And that was what was equal for me. But yeah, so... Oh, and when it comes to um, controller orbs and calibrating them just a little bit at a time, and actually the song that I have playing is Wolves from the OST, and on level hard, I love this map for calibrating because pretty quickly it gives you a little bit of everything. You have rails, you have little trails of notes, and then you get into some crosses. It's a really good way to test out your new settings. Um, if you're good at looking at your hits while you're playing, you're gonna get that feedback. But something I recommend is um, if you're not so good at looking at your hits and getting that feedback, record yourself, watch it back, make a little change, record it, watch it back. And you don't have to play the whole map. Just, you know, play like the first minute and compare them. That's going to help you find your sweet spot for your orbs. Okay, interface, immersive mode, all of those um, note hit colors we were talking about and visual cues. If you turn immersive mode on, you're not going to see them. So if you're playing for score, you probably want to have this off. Score counter, note score counter, you definitely want those on. Multiplier and combo, I don't really pay too much attention to them, but they are on for me. Rails counter, that's your rail score counter. I definitely recommend having this on. Rails are so important for score. I want to say that you get the equivalent of two notes per second on a rail. So you wanna make sure that you get comfortable with getting these as perfectly as possible. Now, the score counter itself, it comes off to the side of the rail. The number, it really doesn't matter. What I pay attention to is my hit color. Am I getting it perfect? Okay, the last setting I wanna talk about related to score is the audio setting. This is a big one for me. I mentioned I get a lot of my cues um, from listening to things rather than seeing them because I'm usually so focused on trying to hit the notes perfectly. So I keep my music volume at 30%. It's plenty loud enough for me, but I bump everything else up that I need to hear to 100% so that way I hear it clearly. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. Note hit sounds. This one's kind of new for me. I used to play with them off, but I noticed that I was having some timing issues especially with two-handed specials, the gold notes, like if they were in a spiral or like a circle, I just was not hitting them at the right times. And I found if I turned my note hit sounds on and made them really loud, <laughs> it really helped me to kind of feel the beat and I get those much better now. So if you have timing issues, give it a try. All of these, I leave off the rail end hit, special start, special complete. Um, I don't really need to hear those. It would probably just distract me. Um, special fail. I want to know if I had a special fail. So that's at 100%. Same with note fail and wall hit. Six times notification. Okay, so when I was newer, I turned this off because it used to give me anxiety. When I would hear it, I would be like, oh my gosh, I got this six times. Don't drop a note. Don't drop a note. Um, but now I like to hear it nice and loud because it gives me that extra push. Hey, you're getting six times multiplier right now. Work harder. <laughs> All right, guys, that wraps it up. I sure hope that you found something that you can experiment with in your settings and see if it helps you achieve a better score if that's something that you're looking to do. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.